What's going on everybody? Trey for Payback in the building coming at you guys with day eight of the Daryl Brooks trial. Now day seven had a lot of hilarious parts to it just because Daryl was getting frustrated. And then per usual, he tries to project his frustrations on the judge Jennifer and the prosecution and pretty much whoever is there at the moment, especially like the witnesses at that time. But I think it's pretty safe to assume that on day eight, he's probably gonna get back to his obnoxious tendencies where he tries desperately to gain control of the courtroom. But look, Look, I'm not gonna do too much talking. We're pretty much just gonna go ahead and get straight into it. But before we begin, I just wanna say thank you so much to everybody for sticking with me and for continuing to watch these along with me because I'm sure a lot of you have already seen this trial already so I really do appreciate it and so I don't forget I want to make sure that I say thank you to everybody that donated I think I already called out a lot of these names in the previous video but I don't want to miss anything and I want to make sure I say thank you to everybody so thank you so much to Rebecca Reams for a $20 donation and I say $20 because you actually donated twice so thank you once again Rebecca I'm pretty much saying this every video now thank you so much Rebecca thank you to Nora Griffin for a dollar donation thank you so much thank you vicky bramlett for another ten dollar donation as well thank you Teresa puffenberger for a five dollar donation i really appreciate it leonard asante for a 25 dollar donation and thank you for the really kind message you left as well and thank you to karen bluebird for a 15 dollar donation i saw that you said you were from waukesha to know that there are actual members of the waukesha community that watch my videos i don't even know what to say like i appreciate it so much and on this channel we wish you guys nothing nothing but love and respect here and nobody has to send me anything by the way but if you'd like to donate to the community of Waukesha there are links pinned at the top of the comment section so if anybody's looking for resources to do that uh, it's right there for you okay that took a lot of time so I'm not gonna hold you guys up any longer let's go ahead and get into the video so we're starting off with Daryl already pretending to read a Bible I can almost guarantee you he's reading like the same two to three words just over and over he's not actually reading it Oh, it's chilly. It looks like he woke up like we, 10 minutes it's ago. It's probably they adjusted it. We'll need to call them and tell them to bump it up a little. Yeah, I just now that the weather better with the people coming No, out. it's, yeah. I would find out what the temperature said. It's cold. Yeah. It's definitely like an ice box in here. Man, just Jennifer getting a sip of the coffee before. Daryl just unleashes all sorts of all right. Good morning, everyone. Subject matter jurisdiction. Court will call and State of Wisconsin stuff. versus Daryl Brooks, case number twenty-one, CF eighteen forty-eight. May I have the appearances, please. Here we go. Yes. Good morning, Judge Schuapper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Woodshell appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Okay. Good morning, sir. Your name for the record, please. I'm here as a third party. No one cares. Court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody in street clothes. He is wearing a suit, I believe a tie, can't quite see around the monitor, and a mask. Your objections noted for the record. The appearance, as I've just indicated, stands. Um, I do want to advise the parties. Uh, today that it's just a matter of time. Uh, one of the jurors called in this morning and was not feeling well, and I did excuse that juror. So uh, that will mean at the appropriate time um, when the court selects the alternates by random lot, uh, I will only be selecting three. I believe that was juror number 35. Okay. All right. Uh, anything uh, preliminary before the jury's brought out for the continuation of testimony from the state? Is the audio on, Your Honor? The, uh, no. Nope. Okay, thank you. All right. Sorry uh, about that. The only thing uh, housekeeping to clean up, Your Honor, is Exhibit 15, which was uh, the victim map that we had first introduced through Detective Casey, and uh, you admitted it subject to uh, proof of all of the events that are depicted on the map. We believe we have now um, reached that point where it can be admitted in full. I do have a poster-sized copy of that exhibit that's also marked as Exhibit 15. So we have Exhibit 1 is the uh, map of the downtown area. Exhibit 15 is the uh, what we have termed the victim map or the parade um, victim map. That's... Uh, a hard copy of that as well, and then I have a third one that I'll be introducing uh, later today or tomorrow 
Uh, but we just wanted to clear up on 15 that uh, all of the information on that map has now been testified to, Your Honor. Um, I did admit it subject to uh, the full foundation. Um, any That's not going to stop Daryl from objecting. That, sir. It's been admitted already, but he'll still. To it being, a, to it being admitted? Yes. Fully received. I had received it subject to foundation uh, and the state's set forth its position. Do you have any position on that? Yeah, I object, I object to it. I don't see the relevancy. All right, your objection is noted. Uh, he just woke up like five minutes ago and walked uh, in. Is here. received. Um, I believe I told the jury it was received subject to that foundation, but I will advise them that it's been received by the court when they come out today. All right, and then uh, one other housekeeping matter. Last week, I believe it may have even been on Thursday, we had a discussion with Mr. Brooks outside the presence of the jury in which several broad topics were discussed. One of them was Mr. Brooks had indicated he did not have a pretrial offer from the state. Uh, we would ask the record to reflect uh, that afternoon we did provide him again with a written copy of our pretrial offer and that was placed with his materials on the table. I just wanted that in the record, please. Uh, we know he didn't read that. that. I don't, uh, if it was with my paperwork, I haven't, I haven't seen it. It was specifically that's, that's one of the papers, sir, that you left in the bullpen area Attorney. that on the next morning, on Friday morning, I made a record of providing back to you. So it was provided to you twice. Well, I haven't seen it. You want yeah. to put the offer on the well, record? That's tough Can I offer? Give me one second, Your Honor. How silly is that that he thinks that's how it actually works? He didn't see it, therefore it's just, it never happened, right? Like all of these, um, all of the, all of these things that are placed on the record and people like it's documented that it was delivered to him. Like all of these people documented that he received it, but just because he didn't read it, oh, it, it, it never existed. Okay, cool. So what's the significance of it being on the record? If, um, how grimy is that? So that you are fully aware of it, sir. It was provided to you. Um, but uh, you're indicating you haven't read it, so I want them to make a record of it. The significance would be, I suppose, if at any point you wanted to change your plea, you could do that based upon the pretrial offer. Well, in any event, I accept for value and return for value that document whenever I'm, whenever I see it. Attorney Upper, go ahead. Sorry, it's just taking me a second to retrieve it here, Your Honor. Are they going to hand it to him right here? I Your Honor, this would be a perfect time to address the subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to be proven on the record and must be Mr. proven Brooks, by the prosecution. I, issued, we are I knew not it was a little to too piece. It. I issued a written decision last week. If you disagree with that, then you can take that up to a higher court. But I issued a written decision. I'm not addressing that any further. It has yet to be proven on record. Mr. Brooks, my written decision is the decision of this court. Has it, been proven, Go ahead. has it been proven on record that you have subject matter jurisdiction because it has yet to be proven? Mr. Brooks, your position is simply not correct as a matter of law. Sue I'll explain that. You prove it law for me by law. Decision. You might be confusing subject matter jurisdiction with venue, which is why I commented on that last week. Absolutely and There has been evidence received regarding venue. So I'm going to turn back to Attorney Oppa. She's going to, to make a venue, record Your of Honor. the pretrial offer. I'd ask that you not interrupt. Thank you. Your Honor, the offer that was dated July 5 of 2022 reads as follows. Plead to counts 1 through 67 in the information. The penalty enhancers on all counts will be struck. Counts 68 to 83 will be dismissed and read in. The state will recommend six consecutive life sentences on counts 1 through 6. The state will recommend unspecified prison on all other counts. The defense is free to argue. This pretrial offer was conveyed to his prior counsel on or about the July 5th date. And there in fact had been a earlier offer as well that had been relayed uh, prior to the preliminary hearing or the filing of the information back in January of 2022 that had also been uh, conveyed to his defense counsel at the time. 
All right, thank you. So why haven't I been informed of that? All right, Mr. Because you don't read um, anything. You don't look into anything. And it's, like I was saying before, it's weird that he thinks this is a tactic he can use to get out. <laughs> I, it almost sounded like I said tacit agreement, but no. This is a tactic that he's trying to actually use to like somehow get out of this, not reading documents. And you see how it worked out for him in the end. You know, you would think that he would like actually process that and go, okay, I should probably read some things or like prepare and at least like somewhat so I can put up a fight or something, but he doesn't even do that. Which makes me, which leads me to believe like I really think he came into this knowing that it's, he doesn't even care to put up a fight. He's really just trying to like get some sort of entertainment for himself out of this. Because I do read a lot of you guys' comments and um, some people have kind of like, some people have said that's what he's pretty much doing here. You know, especially when they put up exhibits and stuff and they show um, the things he actually did during the parade and you see his facial expression like he never looks away his he's just zeroed in on every single thing that's happening on the screen and it's uh it's pretty sick like i'm starting to really believe that's what's going on here he's really just doing this for like his own sort of sick entertainment but yeah that is not a topic we are going to take up um any further i just wanted the record to reflect uh, that that offer was conveyed to you. It wasn't conveyed um, to me, Your Honor. This uh, is the first time I'm hearing of it. So if it was con conveyed uh, to my former it's counsel, not something I'm going to. Uh, it's not something I'm going to further address, sir, unless you indicate to me that you would like to take advantage of the pretrial offer by uh, changing your pleas to either guilty or no contest to counts one through sixty-seven and uh, submit the appropriate paperwork. I'm guessing that's not what you want to do. Uh, so unless that paperwork were to be filed, then I'm going to continue with this trial as if you are exercising your right to a trial in this matter. And in all respect, Your Honor, I don't think it's fair that you should assume what I want to do or not or what I don't want to do. Um, I just need to make a record that that paperwork was provided, sir. We'll continue with the uh, testimony today. Um, I'm not going to take up subject matter jurisdiction. I've issued a written decision. Is there any other preliminary topic from either party? Yeah. Is, that this, is that decision a uh, verified proof that subject matter jurisdiction exists? Because it has yet to be proven on the record. All right. Your objection is noted. Um, please bring the jury out. He's not going to stop talking. Look at this. He's loading up Rana, some is that more. The Look. answer? Mr. Brooks, I issued a written decision. That's and, your answer. And what's that? And what is the written decision in entail? So that was provided to you last week. I'm not going to. I go set for it again. value in return for value the document that I have not seen. What does it entail, Your Honor? What's this guy's like uh, issue with reading? Like, what's up with that? Why does he absolutely refuse to read anything whatsoever? Uh, sir, you were provided with a written copy. I'm not going to read it into the record at this point. It is part of the record. It's a final order. If for it's part of the record, why can't it be read into the record right now? Pretend like it's. It doesn't need to be read into the record. Sir. Is it verified of proof? Of, is it verified proof of subject matter? Mr. Brooks, I'm not answering that because it's not something that needs to be verified. Your it it, does, it, it has to be verified right. by the prosecution. Or is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer that question or verify proof of subject matter jurisdiction? Sir, I have no such tacit agreement, agreement with you, uh, tacit or otherwise. We got so, another tacit um, agreement today. That's not how this operates. Again, just so because the proven? law requires, that doesn't make it true. All right, the Show me lawfully out. law. For the jury, please. Show me by lawfully law that you have subject matter jurisdiction because it hasn't been proven on the record. <laughs> has yet to be proven for the record. Let the record reflect that. Um, the record will not reflect that, and the jury will disregard the comments currently being made. The record just should made reflect by that. Mr. Brooks. You have to put it on the record. You know what's insane? Otherwise, that would be tampering with the record. You can actually see Judge Jennifer getting frustrated this time. What's insane is that, like, all the, like, the start 
or the beginning of each day kind of like blends together at this point. It's like sometimes I'm tempted to fast forward through it when he starts doing these. But I do want to hear like the because some of the issues that they're talking about in between those moments are actually important to the trial. So like it's like sometimes I'm tempted to fast forward like at least 10, 15 minutes in because the one thing you can guarantee is that he's going to have a little rant about subject matter jurisdiction and stuff. But I'll I won't do that. So at 840. All right. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. Attack at agreement at 840. Oh, all right. Please disregard the most recent comment Tacket by Mr. Brooks. It's not evidence in this proceeding. Um, this man right, uses the pure call baby brother tactics. Witness. Thank you, Judge. The state calls Sean It's like Beckler. a younger brother. Subject matter jurisdiction. Jury will disregard that last statement by Mr. Brooks. It has to be on the record. Good morning, Both sir. Please make tonight. your way to the witness stand, which is all the way up by me, to my right. When you right. get there, uh, please remain standing, raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. There is one riser, so just be mindful of that. <coughs> Do you solemnly swear that the testimony together. you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you, sir. Please be seated. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Sean Backler, S-E-A-N, last name, B-A-C-K-L-E-R. All right, go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Backler. Hi. Sir, uh, on November 21 of 2021, where did you live? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Uh, 409 Central Avenue, Waukesha, Wisconsin. Okay, if you could just keep your voice up a little bit, please. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's maybe better if you scoot a little closer to the microphone. Okay. okay, 409 Central Avenue, and that's in the city of Waukesha? Correct. Okay. Around the uh, time of 4.49 p.m. on that afternoon of November 21, 21, where were you? Uh, you may answer, sir. I was outside uh, working around the yard had my garage open. Okay. Were you aware that the annual Christmas parade was going on that afternoon? I was aware of it, yes. Did you attend the parade, sir? No, I did not. Okay. Overruled. Around 4.49 p.m., what happened, sir? Objection. Leading a witness. Um, overruled. I heard some noise around the, on the east side of my garage, and uh, I went to see what was going on. And, I found the defendant uh, on the side of my garage. I asked him, what in the f and hell is he doing? <laughs> okay, so let's, let's slow down a little bit. Uh, you heard a noise and he went. So I didn't, okay, so there was another person that came into contact with Daryl. I'm trying to think. Because I do know about like, um, it's like the only other person I know about that he had like contact with after he ran like after he ditched the car in that guy's driveway was the man with like the doorbell footage, the ring doorbell footage. And so I thought that was like the only other person that he had that he came into contact with and like he let him into his home and gave him a blanket and everything. Or he actually spoke to somebody else. So I guess we're going to hear about explore, that. Explore, correct? Correct. And you saw a person there? Yes, I did. And you questioned that person for being there. Is that right? Objection, uh, leading the witness. Um, foundational, yeah. This is uh, overruled. Uh, his, I, you can answer. I'm not sure if you did or not. <laughs> I, I, I asked him what, what he was doing there. Okay. And uh, maybe you were cursing at him? Is that what you're suggesting? Objection. Yeah, I, the I think I dropped an F-bomb on him. Why? Objection. He's trespassing. Okay. The person Sorry, that you... wasn't objecting, but it's overruled. The person that you saw, can you give us a description of that person, please? Um, when I called it in on the non-emergency line at the Waukesha Police Department. I described him as at about about uh, five foot eight, probably weighed about 150 pounds. Uh, he was either 
black mixed or Latino male, wearing a red shirt, jeans, uh, long hair, beard, and uh, I think he was missing his shoes. Okay. Um, did you, you said a uh, red top? Red shirt. Red shirt. What kind of shirt? Um, overruled, then his answer may stand. He was wearing a red jean. If there is an objection, please just wait until I rule on it first by saying either uh, overruled or sustained, and I'll let you know if you can answer the question. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. I was actually hoping they would keep up that pace just to show Daryl, like, we really don't care that you're objecting or that you're upset to be here. Like, I like to see that kind of stuff, but I understand, like, she has to give them instructions for the testimony and everything. But I was hoping so bad that it would just keep going in that direction. Like, they just talk over them every time. Uh, I think it was a red t-shirt. Okay. Uh to your way of thinking, was he dressed appropriately for the weather? Objection. Oh. Lead no witness. Overruled. Relevancy. Objection. Overruled. Um, immediately, it it just seemed off because he was wearing a t-shirt. I, if, if I remember correctly, he was not wearing shoes. He right. was. It was very cold out. He was uh, sweating. His eyes were huge, and. Uh, he was just acting. He was, when he came out from the garage, he, he was asking if I could call him an Uber. Okay. So you spoke with him a little bit? Objection leading. Um, sustain this to the form of the question, please rephrase. Very, no, very I, shortly. I have to ask him a question. Rephrase oh, question. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Did you speak with him? A little bit. Okay. What do you remember him saying? Um, he kept asking if I could call him an Uber, and then he said I need to get home. Did you agree to call an Uber for him? No, I said he needed to leave my yard. Okay. And did he comply with that? Yeah, he, he did. He uh, just kept asking, if again, if I could call him an Uber, if he could use my phone. He said, you just need to leave. And... Uh, person that you're describing for us, sir, do you see him present in the courtroom here? He's sitting over there with the mask on and in the suit. Okay, I'm going to ask the defendant be instructed to remove the mask. Mr. Brooks, please remove the mask. Frantically reading notes for the first and time. And if he would right look now. at the witness, please, Your Honor, with his head down, it's not to assist him. Right, Mr. Brooks, please uh, look up and look at the witness. Look at the witness, please. Thank you. Is that the man that you're describing that was in your backyard? What's that, that facial you expression? Leading. You know what I'm thinking right now? I'm thinking now he's upset with this guy because he actually cursed at him and he told him to get off of his property because Daryl doesn't think there should be any consequence for what he's for what he does. Just him. Anything he does, there should be no consequence to it. So he's probably upset that this guy told him to get off of his property and went and call him an Uber. So I'm I'm just going to guess right now when they get to the cross exam, he's probably going to be a little bit like aggressive at the beginning. But usually what happens is he'll start off aggressive, but then he has such a small understanding of the questions that it just turns into him like reading off each question. And like maybe he'll give a little bit of like I don't know. Like based on what they say, if he sees, if he hears them say like a word that's like slightly off, he'll. You you guys know. Um, overruled. I want to uh, show you a photograph. It's going to come up on that screen there next to you. Okay. <coughs> Just let me know when it's up. The system takes a minute to warm up, especially first thing in the morning. Objection relevancy. Is it up? Yep, it is. Okay. Do you see uh, this photograph, sir? Objection. Yes. And overall. Yes. I like you. Is there a person shown in the photograph? It's Jackson the defendant. Leading. Um, overruled. It's not leading. You may answer. It's the defendant. 
Is this consistent with his appearance when he presented himself to you on your uh, driveway that evening, your uh, backyard garage area? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. It, it is consistent. Okay. Uh, move to admit and permission to publish 171, Your Honor. Objection, relevancy. Uh, your objection is overruled. Exhibit 171 is received. Permission to publish is granted. That's definitely new. The jurors will also let us know when the image is projected in the jury box. And sir, it's a little hard to tell in the photograph, but was the t-shirt he was wearing a short sleeve or long sleeve, if you remember? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. This is the rain footage I saw. It's a short shirt. Okay. Okay. Ultimately, did he leave your property? Objection, he, accident, answer. Okay. Uh, overruled, he may answer. When he was leaving, he was kind of taking his time, and then I told him he needs to leave again and started walking towards him as he was leaving, and he lifted his shirt up and said he was unarmed. Okay. Had you asked him about any weapons? I had no. Relevancy. I had not asked. When he left your property, did you see which direction he headed? He was going uh, north, uh, northwest. Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. All right, sir. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do. And I object to being called that name for the record. Um, Get the clown show going already. Do you recall giving a statement to a, a officer Probst? I don't know his name, but I, I've talked to an officer. And you, you did talk to an officer that, that night? I talked to an officer on the phone. I did not talk to an officer that night. I mean, on the phone I did, but not in person. So it was uh, a conversation on the non-emergency uh, line. Would that be fair to say? It was on the non-emergency line. Line. I actually uh, confirmed it after I called to make sure I was on the non-emergency line. Do you recall the description that you gave at that time? I do. Well, my best best of my knowledge was that uh, you were either black, Latino, who's you, or mix. Who's you? Well, then you have to answer the question first before you interrupt him with another one. Go ahead with the description you provided that night. I said that the individual was either black, mixed, or Latino. So it would be fair to say you didn't know at the time? I wish I was you would a general description. You. So it would be fair to say that you weren't sure? I was positive that I was positive it was you. Who is you? You. I'm looking at you. He's so upset that he won't play along. Oh, but man, he wants it. He wants everybody to play along so bad. And look, he's so upset right now that he didn't even say, uh, what is this thing he said? <laughs> he doesn't say his usual, I don't consent to being called that and everything. Cause he's so agitated that he won't play along. Nobody cares, man. Go cry about it in your jail cell where you should be. No one cares 1% about it. And how did you come to that conclusion, the, the you conclusion? I'm looking at you. How did, you come, how did you come to that conclusion? Did you... What can, because can you, you restate the question? You're saying, you're saying that you gave an, a description on the non-emergency phone line, correct? It was on a non-emergency line. So it would be fair to say at that time you had no name or knowledge of who uh, the person was That's in your backyard. That's just the dumbest backyard. thing Would that I've be ever fair heard. To say? I had no idea who you were. And so how what can you say who, did, how can you say you then if you had no idea? I'm looking at you, you are the guy. And how did you come to that conclusion? Uh, you and you? I were standing in the same yard looking at each other. 
So, is it possible you saw something? I love in the this news? right now. No, I had no idea who you were. I love this right now. This Interesting. is Interesting. Do you recall giving the description of approximately five feet nine and one hundred and sixty pounds? I, it, it, yeah, it's something like that. I'm gonna try not to. Something so like that, or would that be accurate? I didn't have a tape measure out. It was just a guesstimate. Would it be fair to say that since you keep identifying me as you, would it be fair to say that I'm not 5'9 nor 160 pounds? Do you have your shoes on or off right now? Oh my God. Would it be fair to say? <laughs> this might, okay, so this might end up being my favorite cross exam so far. I mean, the one before with Officer Skulton, that one, that one was really, really good. I'm loving that he's trying so hard to intimidate. <laughs> he's trying so hard to intimidate this dude and to trip him up. But it's like this, this, these simple questions that he thinks just his presence will like intimidate people to answer the way that he wants to do nobody cares and this is a prime example of when you don't care and you just answer his questions like the way that i don't i'm not gonna say the way that you should but like when you just answer his questions with assertiveness it shuts down everything and he's just getting more and more frustrated which means judge jennifer is gonna be He's going to try to make her angry here in a second. I'm not 5'9", 160 pounds. If you take your shoes off and step out of them, they could have a better... I'm not better going to have them do that, but if you're able to answer the question, uh, do you agree? I'd have to be standing next to him. That's what I made my judgment from. We were about two does feet it, from each other. Does it look like I'm 5'9"? I don't know. We were a lot closer. Does it look like I'm 160 pounds? Objections. It's well, been a year. Relevant as to his appearance today, just like his hair isn't in dreadlocks today. <clears throat> it's been a year. Question. Grounds for the sustain. Next question, please. Move on. You also said that. Cry, baby. Well, the narrative in the report. said that the, the individual was later identified. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, that would be fair to say. And so would it also be fair to say that because the, uh, the individual was identified later that that's how you came to the conclusion of who it may have been in your yard? Objection. I think that's Grounds. a statement, Your Honor. He's, again, reading a police report. That's that's a question. Not authored by this witness. It's beyond the scope of the witness's knowledge. It's actually it's, the report that Mr. he Burns, gave. I've heard enough. If the objection is sustained, you may rephrase your question. Look at him aggressively scanning this paper for something he can... <laughs> I hope he can't Did even you find follow anything. the investigation after you had given the, uh, the report on the non-emergency line? It's kind of hard not to see it on TV. Can I, can I clarify something? Or? Um, there's not a question just oh, yet, okay. so... The state will have an opportunity to redirect if they deem it appropriate. Okay. Thank you. I want to so hear you, what you made reference to. Make. It was kind of hard not to see it on the news. Would that be fair to say? It was all over the news. And would it be fair to say that from those news reports, you gained additional information that you didn't have that night? Actually, what I did is went into work the next morning and pulled up the police report on on the internet, and there you were in a so, mugshot. And I'm like, that's the guy. So you got a further description from a mugshot. 
No, I didn't get a further description. At the time, I didn't care who you were when you were in my yard. I didn't know who you were, what you had done, where you had been, any of so, that stuff. So all I'm, all, all I'm saying is you were trespassing in my yard at that time, and that's all I can say. Other than that, that's all, I'm, that's all I can confirm. I don't know what you did. I don't know where you were. I don't know any of the other stuff. All I know is you were the guy in my yard. The guy that you said was five foot nine, 160 pounds. That's exactly right. Ground. You've asked and answered. Ground. Sustained. Next question, you don't have to answer that. He's so And what prompted right you now. to read the, or pull up the police He's report? Oh, Hold on. Grounds, he, he said it. He brought it out there. Um, overruled, he may answer. I was curious of actually who you were and, and what, if you were the person that actually had done the atrocities that were on tel television. And what prompted the, the, the curiosity? A uh, stranger was in my yard, unannounced, trespassing, asked him to leave, and they ended up catching somebody for doing something very bad, and I was wondering if that was the individual that had cut through my yard. Now watch Daryl try to make it seem as if that's weird. Like, what? You would want to find out about the person? <laughs> but I was just going to say really quick that these are the funniest testimonies. I mean, not funny in a sense where it's like, I mean, you guys know me at this point. I'm not saying that this whole situation is funny, but it's funny because you can visibly see and hear how threatened he is in this moment. So it just makes the entire cross exam that much more funny. When you're super assertive with him, he just can't do anything with you. And that's that makes it all the more funny. He's gonna try to trip him up here, like pretty soon. Never can do it. <laughs> as he takes three minutes to read a question. So it would be fair to say at the time you wasn't privy to that knowledge yet? Judge I Grounds. Oh, sustained us to the form of the question. At the time you pulled up the police report, as you say, you, you had no knowledge of the identity of the individual. I didn't know that you were gonna be the person that had done that. You keep referring to the you you. I'm looking into your eyes right now. You're the, the guy I'm talking about when I refer to you. And the record should reflect that uh, the witness used his right hand and index finger to point directly at uh, the defendant. <laughs> Next question, please. Great thing to put on the record as well. The record should definitely reflect that. going to be another five minute pause in between the next so question. So you just made reference to looking the you in the eyes, but you would need... What would you prefer to call you? You would need... Because you're not going by Daryl Brooks. You would need me to step out of my shoes to tell my height and weight, right? Well, I'd have to also stand two feet hold from on, me. Hold on, hold on, please. Um, Mr. Brooks, you're directed under 90611 to ask a question and not argue with the witness. That, that Thank was you. A question. Yes. It was argumentative. The now, only thing he wants to do is argue question. right now. That's and then the witness is instructed to wait until a question is asked. And if there's any objection, then I rule on it first. Go ahead, next question. Baby, he's a little he's a little like kid. Can't outsmart anybody. Look, now he's trying to direct it at testifying right in this testimony. We'll have an opportunity if you cho choose to do that later. Please ask a question. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to you. You know they keep a warm baby bottle in the next courtroom for you. I know that's why you're agitated. Can we get a 906.11 for these pauses? 
Any reason why you didn't give a, a, a written statement to law enforcement? Objection, argumentative, Grounds. irrelevant. Positive, argumentative. Sustained. As to the form of the question, next question, please. Did you at any time give a written statement to law enforcement? I don't believe so. Any reason why not? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative and irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds, Grounds for the sustain. Mr. Brooks, please ask your next question. Grounds for the sustain. The frustration right now is palpable. You said you pulled up the uh, police report at work the next day, right? No, I pulled up your mugshot. Well, you did say police report. Would that be fair to say? I just pulled up a mugshot. You don't recall saying that you pulled up the police report specifically? I specifically oh. wanted to pull up the picture of the person that had committed those atrocities to see if that was the person that had cut through my yard, which confirmed it was. He's not going to back down from this. Watch this. But you just said, you just said police report though, right? Okay. And did you pull up the complaint? Gotcha. No. Have you ever seen the complaint? I don't believe I have. Have you yourself filed a complaint? Nope. Might be getting close Any to the reason end. why not? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Sustained. As to the form of the question. And on relevance, next question. I'm surprised he didn't argue about that. How is it irrelevant? He usually does. Uh, Do you recall who subpoenaed you to testify here today? Uh, it's on the subpoena. You don't recall? I'd have to have the subpoena with me, though, to read the name. Do you recall if it was the district attorney's office? It or? was. Do you recall about how long you received, or how long ago you received the subpoena? You can answer that. Uh, a month or two ago, a couple months ago. I didn't. I got a subpoena, so that's all I know, and I had to show up at a certain time. I like how now he's looking at Judge Jennifer to see if he should answer it or if he shouldn't. It's almost like dismissive of Daryl as well. And you guys know how much I, I'm liking it. Like every time that it shows that every time like a witness or a judge, Jennifer, or like anybody that's present, you know, the prosecution, they're able to show that they really don't care about how he feels or like what he's saying or his antics to like try to control the room. So I love that he's looking at her first, like, should I answer it? Okay. And then he speaks. Like it's it's so dismissive of him and you know it like makes him upset. <laughs> it's gonna make him even more upset. He'll probably say something about it. So you knew it was a possibility that you would be called to testify. I had no expectation of the subpoena until I went to the DA's office. So you went to the DA's office? They want to know. They they ask. <clears throat> they want to see if, if if you're worth having as a witness, or if you actually had any information that was pertinent to the case. And so, would it be fair to say that you felt that you did? I didn't know grounds. Um, I'll sustain as to the form of the question that strike the last response. Please rephrase. Did you feel that you had uh, 
information that would be relevant to the matter? That's an irrelevant question, Rounds. Your Honor. Sustained. Next question, please. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Ask your next question, please. <laughs> it's to the point now where it's like, I know Judge Jennifer can't just start saying stuff like that. Like, she has to stay within, like, she's, right now she's acting as a judge, so she can't just say stuff or, like, say whatever comes to her mind right now. But it's like sometimes, and I hear some of the stuff you guys say in the comments about what you wish she would say in this moment or, like, at this time stamp. And it's like sometimes I wish she would say a little, a little something, but I know she can't. You know, it might, I don't know if that would leave room for him to have some sort of mistrial or if that would leave some room at all for him to, like, be able to get out of this situation. But just in case, I'm, I'm glad she didn't. You know, but I know this is frustrating. To have a grown man child behaving like this in a courtroom right now, it's like, what? When you went to the uh, district attorney's office, did you recall whom you spoke with? Um, There's three or four people there. Um, I don't recall. Recall their names, I recall their faces. You said you do recall the names, not the faces? No, I recall their faces, not their names. Oh. Do you see any of those district attorneys in court here today? I see one district attorney and uh, one officer was in the room. And for the record and for the jury, Let the record reflect. can you identify whom you... You're referring to? I'd have to point. Um, the, <laughs> I'll yeah. And Mr. The, this officer, and this officer here, sitting behind them. Right, so the yes, witness detective. has pointed to uh, District Attorney Sue Upper and uh, Detective Casey. His, his little mind is blown right now. Every time that happens, and that was he really the thinks time that he just uncovered something. It was the time that the subpoena told me to show up. I'm actually not sure what that question was. I'm just going to go back a little bit. Let me see. And that was around the time you first received the subpoena? It was the time that the subpoena told me to show up. These questions are ridiculous. Per usual. And I want to go ahead and like apologize to you all now because I don't know if it's coming off on camera, but like I'm super agitated with Daryl right now. <laughs> it's like when I started recording this, I was already in a bad mood to like see him. And then as soon as I heard his voice, I was like, oh my goodness, I hope this dude ends up crying. I hope he gets kicked out today. I, like when i first initially started recording i just knew already like okay i'm not in a good mood to like to have to hear him or anything of the sort do you like, recall ever so i'm a, I, i'm sorry if it's coming off on camera do you recall right ever now. being told about the plaintiff in this matter objection Fag sustains to the form of the question do you know who the He's plaintiff is in this matter here, though objection grounds Vague beyond Browns. the scope of the witness's knowledge, legally inaccurate, sustained Browns. to the form of the question. 
<laughs> he's pretending like he's. You know exactly what I'm talking about. No. Hasn't known a Did single thing. Did Opera ever tell you who the plaintiff was? Why he's asking the questions? The subpoena told me who the plaintiff was. And do you recall who the plaintiff is? Daryl Brooks. It, that's the plaintiff? Or not the plaintiff, though. The plaintiff... It's it, a stupid question. City of it's a dumb Wisconsin, question. I'm not sure. But you just said Daryl Brooks, right? And it'd be fair it's to say that that's not question. a living, breathing human being. Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Sustained. Not relevant. Next question. Are you aware that only a living, breathing human being can make a claim? Objection. Grounds. That is not true. Argumentative. Grounds. Uh, sustained for those reasons, and it's also not an accurate statement. It's definitely not. Definitely not That's argumentative. Right. Mr. Brooks, under 90611, I need please you to kick move on out. from this topic and ask a different line of questions, please. It's, it, move on from what topic, Your Honor? Next question, sir. Can I know what topic you're referring to, Your Honor? Next question, please. If I don't know the topic, how would I know? Okay, to he doesn't know the topper, so in this testimony, in this cross-exam, I mean. Question. Do you know if there's even a plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. In the cross-exam, Sustained. Please. Under 90611, sir, please move on from this topic, or I will declare your cross-examination closed. Please just end it. Under what law, in fact, Your Honor? Under 90611, please ask a question. And where can I find 90611? This is your last opportunity to ask a question, sir. Your Honor, the jury deserves to know this information. All right, uh, then, uh, the state, thank can you. you redirect? No, redirect. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you may step down. State may call its next witness. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm getting agitated. This man, baby, child. It's, it's insane that he can, like, maintain this type of, like, energy throughout the entire trial. And I, we know he's not going to stop. He's going to keep doing this. But how, how do you not have, like, a moment of self-reflection where you're like, okay, I'm being, like, like, I'm straight up humiliating myself right now. Oh, it's disgusting. Can call? Blowing his nose into the microphone. This right, guy's giving up a long time ago. Please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right, up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're right. about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Dominic Capruin, D-O-M-A-N-I-C-C-A-P-R-O-O-N. All right, thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Mr. Capruin, are you a resident of the city of Waukesha? Yes. Where were you living on November 21st of 2021? 417 Central Avenue. Um, the objection is overruled. His answer may stand. When there's an objection, if you would just wait until I rule on it before you answer. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. 417 Central Avenue, Waukesha, Wisconsin. Okay. Were you home on the afternoon of November 21st, that Sunday afternoon? Yes. Overruled. His answer may stand. What was the answer? Yes. I believe is what he said. Yes. Okay, hopefully he... I got a feeling he's going to keep doing that now. He's going to say, oh, what was the answer? I didn't hear it. But, okay, so this is interesting. So apparently there were multiple people that came into contact with Daryl on that night when he was running to, I guess, ask somebody if he could use their phone or something like that. So I'm guessing that he was another, like maybe a neighbor of... The um, 
the previous witness. Maybe he was a neighbor or somebody that lived within that neighborhood. And Daryl also came into contact with him and asked him to use his phone or to get an Uber or something. So that's interesting because I thought it was just that one guy. Like I said before, that uh, they captured like the ring doorbell footage and everything. Can you tell us what happened shortly before 5 o'clock p.m. that day? Well, um, we were at home and uh, my youngest son just got home from a friend's house and uh, we were... Um, uh, ready to get um, water from uh, Woodman's and uh, we uh, um, Were you outside or inside? We were inside, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Did you at some point make your way outside? Um, yeah, um, we eventually decided to go and uh, uh, we were bringing the jugs out to the truck and, um, sorry. It's okay. Tell us about the setup. Take your time. Where was your truck parked? Um, my truck was parked uh, by the back door and the tailgate was facing the entry of the driveway. So you were, the truck was in the driveway? Yes. Okay. And what happened is you were also standing in the driveway? Um, when I was, I was putting the, the jugs in the uh, back of the truck. Um, my son, my oldest son, uh, looked up and he kind of pointed behind me and I went turn and uh, uh, Mr. Brooks uh, was uh, coming up the driveway and uh, when I turned, um, he uh, kind of stopped and I noticed that he wasn't wearing a jacket or shoes. Um, just Could you tell us what he was wearing? He was wearing uh, Um, Overall, he may answer. Okay. Um, he was uh, wearing just the blue jeans and like a red t-shirt. And uh, he had lifted his shirt and did a 360 and told me that he didn't have any weapons and uh, that he needed a phone to call an Uber. And so um, I said, yeah, sure, no problem. So, you know, I handed him my phone and uh, I had wow. suggested to him that my neighbor was uh, a Lyft driver. And uh, so, we continued to, you know, with the containers. And uh, so I put the last one in and he handed me my phone and um, he uh, turned the corner and uh, just wanted to see if he, you know, got a hold of my neighbor, looked around the corner and, and then he was, he was gone. So. When Mr. Brooks lifted his shirt and did a 360 and said he was unarmed, were those the first words he said to you while you were in your driveway? Objection leading in and I do not consent to being called that name. Um, overruled. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I think it was more or less all together. Okay. And how many of your sons were present? And in the driveway with you. Objection, rather busy. Overruled. Um, two. How old were they at the time? Objection, rather busy. Overruled. You may answer. Um, one was uh, 21 and the other one was uh, 14. Do you recall providing a physical description of this, of Mr. Brooks, the person you've referred to as Mr. Brooks today? Um, back on November 21st when you met with the police? Objection. I did not Don't consent, consent to being called that name. Mr. Brooks, that's not a valid objection at this time. Um, go ahead, you may I answer. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, I don't care. Call yes, him Mr. Uh, Brooks again, please. Uh, <laughs> Call him Mr. Brooks again. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? <laughs> 
Yeah, oh my it. goodness. I, and you know something? I got a feeling, once again, he's going to try to go at this guy. Because once again, I got a feeling like that aggression from the previous uh, cross-exam is going to carry over into this one. And clearly, this guy, he like he's a bit nervous of it. And like I've talked about my problems with public speaking and stuff. So I completely understand that. If you guys don't know, I have a video that I put up on the channel. I talked about like my problems with public speaking and how I actually, like during my first, um, like my very first college presentation, I actually fainted like in front of an entire like crowd of people. So that was humiliating. So like I understand completely where he's coming from. So it's like, I, but I got a feeling though, during this cross exam that's coming up, He's going to try to go especially aggressive at him just because he can sense that he's a bit nervous up here and he feels as if he didn't get out all of the aggression from that previous cross exam. But maybe he'll um, maybe he'll dial it back a bit because I've actually seen him do that too, which is it's weird. Sometimes you can't even gauge what he's really going to do. But November 21st, we'll see. when you met with the police, did you provide a physical description of the man who came up your driveway. Yes. Objection, rather than see. Overruled. What was the physical description you provided? Um, it was a black male, um, mid-30s at the time, um, dreadlocks, uh, tied up in a band. He had uh, tattoos. One I noticed uh, above his right eye, um, and some he had on his arms, but it was kind of dark yet, so then. So the darkness prevented you from being able to see any detail of the arm tattoos? Yes. Objection, leading. Overruled. Your Honor, could you please instruct Mr. Brooks to remove his mask momentarily? Mr. Brooks, please remove your mask and look at the witness. Mr. Caprone, the person you've described today is walking up your driveway the person who you've referred to as Mr. Brooks today. Do you see that person in the courtroom? I was going to do a thumbnail, but I'll, I'll let it go. Beating. I'll Overruled. You may <laughs> answer, sir. To be in court that name, yes. Could you please point to him and then tell us what he's wearing? He's wearing a suit and tie. Let the, Your Honor, let the record reflect, please, that the witness has identified the defendant. The record will so reflect. And then he pointed with his right hand towards Mr. Brooks. Oh, thank you for that. Jackson, don't consent to being caught that name. For the record. Whose phone, you described handing a phone to Mr. Brooks. Whose phone was it? Objection, I don't consent to being caught that name. Your objection is noted, although it's not legally relevant at this time. And I'd ask that you not interrupt. Uh, with an objection for that reason under 96 Now he's really going to do it. Now he's going to really do we'll it. Go ahead, Attorney Wichel, your question again. That name. Oh, maybe this will be uh, what gets him kicked out today. Okay, yeah, keep not consenting to this. <laughs> your Whose name. Hopefully he gets kicked out that for that reason. I, that was my fault. <clears throat> Whatever yeah. gets him in the other court. Did you court see room. what that man did with the phone? Objection uh, leading. Overruled. Answer. He uh, he called a number on the phone, or called somebody, which I at the time thought was Uber. Did that man then hand the phone back to you at some point? Yes. When you met with the police, did they ask to see your phone? Yes. And the purpose of that was to try and see the number that yes. Mr. Brooks had called? Objection. Yeah. Overruled. No consent to me and call it that name. Yes. Can we please show for the witness only uh, exhibit number 74, a photograph? Go ahead. Objection, brother VC. Overruled. Grounds. It's relevant. Mr. Caprun, do you see a photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. What are we looking at here? Um, this is the number that uh, Mr. Brooks had called. Can you read that number out loud for us? Objection, oh. relevancy. Overruled. Um, 
610-2153. This must be his mom, right? And this is a call history screenshot, is that right? Where we can see uh, all the recent calls to and from that number? Yes. Is this an accurate depiction of how your phone screen looked uh, that afternoon as you showed it to the police? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes. I move exhibit 74 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. Objection. Relevancy. Exhibit 74 is received. Permission to publish is granted. The objections overruled. 74. Let me make sure. Can you zoom in on the bottom half of this photograph? Okay, Mr. Caprun, did you call this number at any point? Objection. Leading. Um, Overruled. He may answer. No. So all three of these calls, outgoing, incoming, and canceled, would have been made by someone other than you. Yes. Objection. Leading. And the only person who had your phone during that time frame was who? Objection. Me. Leading. Um, overruled. Or Derek, no, Mr. Brooks. Do you consent to being called? He's going to say it. After Mr. Brooks handed you your phone back, what happened next? Um, a lady had called me, um, and I answered the phone, and uh, I asked her if she was an Uber, and she told me she wasn't an Uber. Did she say anything else? Objection, leading. Overruled. Uh, no. Is the call that you're talking about, the lady who called you, was that that incoming call from that 414 number we just looked at? Objection, leading. Um, sustain us to the form of the question. Did you recognize the number that called you? Um, I didn't recognize it. I didn't look at the number. I just answered the phone. And it was recorded in your phone's call history? Yes. And it was the same number that Mr. Brooks had used your phone to dial. Objection. Yes. Leading, and I don't consent to being caught in it. Overruled. I'm sorry, I took the exhibit down. Did you need it back up? No, um, we're done. All right, thank you. And that was a yes, just to be clear. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did Mr. Brooks leave at some point? Objection. I don't consent to being caught in it. Yes. Did you see what direction he went when he left? Um. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so now when he objects for that, they can just keep talking. And she's not going to like, she's not going to ask for him to wait a moment for her to make a ruling on it because it's, it's just pointless nonsense. It's always been pointless nonsense, but that's okay. That's great. I guess it would be like uh, the southwest part of my property, um, heading more westerly towards my neighbor's. Do you know what street he was headed, or he appeared to be He's headed He's probably somewhere at it, won't Objection is speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer, sir. Um, well, Central Avenue is an L Street, and he was heading towards Central. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all. All right, very well. Uh, any questions, Mr. Brooks, for this yes. witness? I don't consent to being caught that name for the record. Um, do you recall um, giving a statement to a Detective Schwartz? I'm not sure what his name was. I'm referring to a Detective Mandy L. Schwartz, so that would be a woman. There was a female, yes. And do you recall giving a statement to the woman law enforcement officer? Yes. Do you recall uh, if that was the same night or days immediately after? It was the same night. And do you recall in that statement, if you were asked about the a description of the person in your driveway? 
Yes. Do you recall what you uh, what, what you said? Yes. May you state it for the record and for the jury? Yes. Um, uh, black male, thirties, um, dreadlocks, um, red shirt, jeans, no shoes, no jacket. If it pleases the court, I have a, the statement here, and I would like to show the witness. Is it his written statement? It's the, I'm guessing, whatever statement he gave We've to been Detective Shorts. This already. Is it a written statement? I don't know if it's a written statement. Fisher Price, man. Fisher Price attorney. Would maybe it the, may. Maybe would it this may. be the police report? Yeah. If it's not his written statement, then I'm going to deny that request to show it to the witness. You may ask a question. He's furious right now. <laughs> Do you recall? He just attempted to make a move and got denied immediately. In your that, um, that is hilarious. Report with Detective Shorts. Has no idea what he's doing. That you described the male as approximately five five to five six, weighing approximately one twenty to one hundred and twenty five pounds. And the male appeared to be in his 20s? Um, yeah, I don't recall. Any reason why um, this report would say that and then you would, when you were asked the description, you gave a different description? We've been through any reason so many why times. the two would conflict? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. Grounds yeah. mistakes the evidence. Sustained. Reason for the sustain. Grounds for the sustain. Sustained as to the form of the question. And it mistakes the testimony in part. Well, I'm reading from the report that was given to the detective. And you can't testify as to what that report says. You can only question the witness on it, sir. That was a question. Do Do you recall? He said he did not recall. Next question. All right, I was about to pause and say, I'll, I'll wait until he gets a couple more questions off. Any reason why your um, description would change from that night till now? Um. It's been a year. Um, I'm not sure. Um, you made reference that's to... That's a good answer. That, no, that's actually an answer that he can... Use. And Daryl will be stuck in his tracks. He doesn't know how to follow up in order to like actually unpack the things that people say in a way that's like he can go a little further and then a little further beyond that he has no idea so you really could just give him a small answer and like he won't know what to do afterwards he'll just move on to the next one the next topic um, when the mail that was in your that's driveway left fine. your driveway they went towards central i think is what you said would that be fair to say see yeah. he's already moving forward do you recall Stating in um, your report that they went in the direction of West Avenue? Yes. Would it be fair to say that that's two different directions? Um, yes. Any reason why that would change from then till now? Um, not sure. That's like the only question that I can say an attorney actually probably would press on that issue. So that's really the first time that Daryl has ever asked a question where it's like, okay, an attorney probably would, if they heard like the testimony and he's saying two different directions like that, they would press for, or 
not press further on that, but they would ask him about it. But once again, he has no idea how to follow up on that and how to like get more information to to leave room for more inconsistencies and then he can further try to like break apart this man's entire testimony. But he has no idea what to do. No idea whatsoever. And plus it's been like over a year, I think, at this point. So of course he's gonna his memory's gonna be a little bit fuzzy about some things. And you made reference to it being kind of dark, so it was um, a little hard to tell about uh, certain aspects of that interaction. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would you say it was dark or dusk? Dusk. So it'd be fair to say that you were unable to identify tattoos? Um, I would, I would be able to, yes. You would be able to identify tattoos or you wouldn't? Not, um. I wish they would ask him um, I wish they would ask Daryl to like explain the question further because it's a bit vague in the sense where it's like do you want him to explain where he saw the tattoos or actually say what it is the tattoo says you know so I wish they would have maybe sustained to that or not or not sustained to it but objected to maybe vagueness or something like that I knew I saw tattoos but you couldn't make out because of the lighting you couldn't make them out would that be fair to say i can make out tattoos do you recall stating that you were not able to identify the tattoos um in man he's i guess in description i guess her uh in detail sorry Oh no, this is the first witness he is tripping up ever so slightly a little bit. He's actually finding inconsistencies in the things he says. But at the end of the day, they got plenty of evidence. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I feel like even with this testimony, you know, and even the fact that there are some, he's catching him on some inconsistencies with it. But like at the same time, like I said, this has been over a year. At this point, I think it's been over a year. And also, let's be honest, the amount of evidence that's stacked up against this man at this point, I mean, what could he possibly do? You know, unless they found out he had like a twin brother that day that was somehow in the area or something like that. But it's like, no, this, even with this moment here, it, it doesn't do anything in the grand scheme of things. So not being able to make out in detail would be the, uh, referring to the tattoos on the arms. Yes. And during that interaction in the lighting, you could tell that there was a, a, some type of rubber band or tie in the hair? Yes. Please don't tell me he said he saw no rubber band. Do you recall what color that might have been? No, I don't.
you you made reference to a um a number calling you back and you not <coughs> looking at the number but just answering. Do you recall stating that? Yes. Did you ever at any time ask who that was that called? Uh, I just asked if uh, it was the Uber driver. amount of time you stated that um, your sons were with you in the driveway yes was there any interaction with your sons at that time mm. that's definitely vagueness don't recall was there any interactions with your sons? I mean, at that point, they could have interrupted and did said things. Because what that? do you mean? Are you saying, did you interact, Daryl Brooks? Did you interact with his sons? or The male did not have any interactions with either of your sons? No. Honestly, these long pauses in between these questions that are more painful. The male you had the, the interaction with. Than him pointing out the small inconsistencies. Do you recall stating that you did not really think he was understanding what you were telling him? I don't understand the question. What did he say? I think he's going to repeat it. That would be in reference to um, you stating that your neighbor was an Uber driver, did you? Or a Lyft driver, you, was I think the word you said. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you stated that you don't recall if the individual went to your neighbor's house at that time. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall about what time of the evening that was when you had the interaction? Um, um, I wasn't, I'm not quite sure what time it was at that time. Do you recall uh, around what time you were subpoenaed to testify here <laughs> today? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I think a letter came in the mail in July.
And did you follow up with the district attorney's office at that point? Um, yes. Do you recall whom you spoke with? Um, uh, not quite sure the names, but. You made a, uh, let the record reflect, you made a hand gesture with your left hand. Would that be referring to the table? Yes. The prosecution table? Yes. So you recall speaking to one of those attorneys? Yes. Do you recall whom? Um, the gentleman here. I'll stipulate that uh, Mr. Caprin's pointing at me. Yeah. All right, the record will still reflect. I love how they have a little smirk every time that happens. Good. And at any time, did you uh, ever see a police reporter complain in this matter? Um, no. Did you ever yourself make a claim in this matter? I don't understand the question. Did you file a claim? I don't understand the question. That doesn't explain it anymore. None of us ever do. Did you yourself file a complaint with law enforcement? <coughs> no. Sovereign citizen questions starting up right now. It's like the pace that this is going. He really should end this cross exam, but it's, he never does. Ever spoke with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. 90611. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Instead of actually entertaining that, she just told him 90611. <laughs> We're about to end your cross exam. You need to move on already. You child, you. Are you aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Relevance 90611 as well. Hopefully, we get a plaintiff in this matter. To this. Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Next question. Had any conversations or any interactions with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds? Uh, sustains to the form of the question. Ever had a phone conversation with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds? Sustained us to the form of the question. <coughs> Ever been contacted by the plaintiff in any way? Objection. Grounds? Sustained us to the form of the question. Have you ever contacted the plaintiff in any way? Objection. Grounds? He wants her to end this cross exam. We're not supposed to stay here. Right? End it, please. Uh, No further questions. Have you uh, followed uh, this matter in any way? Um, no. So it would be fair to say you didn't seek to testify in this matter. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Were you persuaded in any way to testify in this matter? No. That's the first time he's ever directly 
said something like that or asked something like that. Did you prepare in any way to testify in this matter? No. Hold on. I'll wait until they finish this part. Daryl honestly could have said I didn't prepare either, so it's And before okay. you you were shown exhibit I'm seventy four questions off uh, right now. And that was the the call log of your phone, correct? Before oh, I'm sorry, but Yes. Before today had you seen that uh those photos in reference to your call log? Yes. You seen them before today? Yes. Did you anticipate seeing them today? Mm, yes. How so? Um... Through um, the uh, um, sorry, okay. through uh, the uh, district attorney. So you were informed that you would see those same photos by the district attorney. Yes. Honestly, now I'm starting to feel bad about this cross exam just because I can tell I can tell he's getting more nervous as it's going on, especially when Daryl asks these really pointless questions that just like even and I'm sitting here, I listen to the questions and I'm like I try to put it together like even though we're on day 8, I try to think of it from a perspective of somebody that's just now hearing this stuff and it's like, oh, have you have you filed a complaint in this matter? It's like, what? That's so that's so beyond vague that it's insane. So I would understand why they get stuck on that. But you can visibly see like he's really nervous to be up here. It's like. This this really should have ended. I mean, really, they should have ended it by the time Daryl took like a whole 10 minutes his entire cross exam is like 10 minutes of silence with him just like reading through the questions for the first time and trying to make sense of what it is he's about to say. But it's like they really should just end it sometimes based on that. But also the fact that, you know, the witness right now is clearly very nervous. And uh, and he even admitted he didn't prepare for any of this stuff. So like that kind of makes sense as to why he has these inconsistencies. Where it's like he's given answers that don't match what it is he said that day. So, yeah, let me know in the comments, too. Like, is that a thing they can do? They can, like, prepare you for the answers or not, like, tell you what answers to give, but just you look over the evidence. And so you have your own, you have time to think about what it is that you, um, what it is that you have to say based on what they're going to show you. You know, I'd imagine you can because why else would they show you the evidence and, um, you know, bring you into the DA's office and everything. So I'd imagine that is possible. But let me know in the comment section if that's like something that you can do, because I understand there are quite a few like attorneys and stuff that watch. So. Were you at any time, were you at any time told what to say by the district attorneys? No. It's the first time he's ever directly just asked these questions. 
which is surprising. And are you even aware of a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Um, grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? I previously sustained it. Next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Next question. Under 90611, please continue. Please just Otherwise end it. I'll declare the cross examination yeah, ended. You can, you, just, you can declare whatever you want to. No, no further questions. Thank you. Can you read nice. <coughs> Very briefly, thank you, Judge. Mr. Capruin, I just want to clarify the geography of your neighborhood, okay? So back where you were living on uh, November 21st of last year on Central Avenue, does Central run east to west, north to south, or something else? Objection leading. Hold on, You may answer, sir. Central runs east and west and north and south. Where does it, what direction does it run? Where you were living at the time. Objection leading. East and east and Hold west. On. Overruled. Oh, it's not leading. You may answer. Objection relevancy. It's relevant. You may answer, sir. East and west. And then where does it change and run north and south? Um, Objection relevancy. Overruled. It changes um, my neighbor's house and then it turns north and, and south. That happens to the west of where your yes. house was? Yes, objection leading. Yeah. Well, overruled, his answer may stand. I'll say yes. Yes. Where is West Avenue in relation to where your house was? Objection, rather than see. Overruled. Um, west. <laughs> so is it fair to say that if you're standing in your driveway at the time and head west, you would hit where Central Avenue turns and then if you kept going, you'd hit West Avenue? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. So is it also fair to say that if you're heading towards Central Avenue, you're also heading toward West Avenue? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. You recall meeting with myself and my colleagues here a few weeks ago? Objection yes. relevancy. Overruled. Do you remember where that meeting took place? Um, here. In the courthouse? Yeah. During business hours? Objection relevancy. Overruled. You question him about. You question him about exactly. They can. These are proper. I didn't question him about the time. It's proper redirect. Go ahead, sir. You may answer. Yes. We uh, discussed yeah. your absolute clown. He asked the questions to open the door for it, and now it's upset that they get to unravel everything he asked. Potential testimony. Is that right? Yes. Were we asking you questions about? November 21st. Objection speculative. Overruled. You may answer. <coughs> yes. We showed you uh, that the photograph of the call log, right? Yes. And you you had an independent recollection. You had seen that call log before because it's from your own phone. Objection. Leading. Uh, sustained as to the form of the question. Had you ever seen that photograph before? Yes. And had you ever looked at your phone screen before? Objection for leading. Not leading. It's relevant, and he may answer. Um, yes. Did we at any time give you a script for your testimony today? Objection. Ask the doing cross. Um, it's redirect. It's proper. You may answer. It's overruled. No. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all we have. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Statement calls next witness. Oh, thank that you. was State a tough one. State calls Aaron Cordes. That was actually a tough one. Why is he repeating the same little sounds? Okay, let me get my notes back off it. All right, good morning. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right. It is up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing and raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shows the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. 
Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Erin Cordes, first name E-R-I-N, last name Cordes, C-O-R-D-E-S. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Cordes. Good morning. Uh, Ma'am, I'd like to direct your attention to the date of November 21, 2021. Did you attend the Waukesha Christmas Parade that afternoon? Yes, I did. And who did you attend the parade with? Uh, my husband and my two children. Do you recall uh, Back to from what goers. location you watched the parade? Objection. Really miss you. Overruled. She may answer. Uh, we watched it from the corner of West and Wisconsin. Okay. And uh, do you understand that to be near the end of the parade route? Objection. Leading. Um, overruled. She may answer. Uh, I believe it was close to the end. Um, the parade rounded the corner and continued on, and I don't know exactly where it ended. Okay. And uh, as you were uh, at that location watching the parade, did something unusual happen? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Um, yes. We, we saw a car going pretty fast around the corner. Um, and Oh, no. She said I car. I remember my husband said that's not a not, that's not part of the parade grab the kids because our kids were in the middle of the road picking up candy at the time okay. so um and the car just did not stop and kept going was there a police officer present at that corner uh yes there was what did you see the police officer do um well the the car i thought it was coming at us for a minute but it ended up swerving and going through the barricades and the police officer um fired three shots at the vehicle you were standing oh, right she there. Was in that area. Yes, I was. Okay. What, what is noted? It's overruled. Uh, her answer may stand. Next question. Go ahead. What did you do after that, ma'am? Uh, well, we ran up to the house behind us as the car was coming at us, and um, I was just kind of keeping an eye out for the car at the time because I, it looked like it was out of control, and I didn't know if it was going to go up to the house we were at or what direction it was going. So we just stayed by the house. For a little bit just kind of in shock okay after that happened okay and at some point did you decide to leave the area yes we did where did you go uh, we went we were parked a little bit further away because we had gotten to the parade late so we were parked um, a few blocks out of the way uh, on Elizabeth Street okay in at Aries Industries now do you have some familiarity with Aries Industries uh, yes Very I do sure. overruled she may oh. answer do me a favor, if there is an objection, wait until I rule on it before you answer. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. And uh, what's your familiarity with Aries Industries? Objection. Overruled. He objects to everything. My husband is employed at Aries Industries. Do you happen to know the address of that location? Objection. Relevance. Overruled. You may answer. I don't offhand, no. Okay. Do you know what street it's on? Objection. Relevance. Overruled. Leading. It's not leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, Elizabeth Street. Okay. And uh, is it, a, how were you able to, um, I'll strike that. You were walking back to Aries Industries, that's where you had parked, right? Correct. What was your route or your path that you took? We continued straight on, on West Avenue until we got to Elizabeth Street and then took a right on Elizabeth Street. Okay. Pretty much a straight shot? Yes. Just a couple blocks. Yes. Down West Avenue, and then you hang a right on Elizabeth. Correct. Okay. As you were doing that, making your way back to your car, uh, did you encounter somebody out on foot? Yes, we did. Tell us about that, please. Objection, Lee. Overruled. She may answer. We had just rounded the corner onto Elizabeth Street, and um, Daryl Brooks. We ran into, we encountered Daryl Brooks. He came out of the shadows be, between a couple houses and approached us. Okay. Now you refer to this person by name. Did you know Mr. Brooks prior to this encounter? No. Nope. Okay. Never met him before? Correct. Objection. And you yeah. said he, oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Um, the objection came after her answer. Uh, her answer will stand. Uh, next question. You said Blame he yourself. Came out of the <laughs> Is she upset? Bushes? Like that's their fault. Objection. <laughs> what did you say? <clears throat> Oh, overruled. She rephrased. He may answer. She may answer. I'm sorry. 
It appeared he came be, be, from between two houses, so I, I don't know exactly where he was. Okay. And did you notice his appearance when he approached you? Objection to leaving. Overruled. Yes, I did. What did you notice? Um, it was, I just remember it was a very windy, cold night, and he was dressed pretty inappropriately for the night. He had a, I noticed he was visibly shivering. He had a red short sleeve t-shirt on and was not wearing shoes. Do you see the same person present in this courtroom here today? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I'm going to ask that Mr. Brooks be instructed to remove his mask and look at the witness so she can properly identify him, please. Mr. Brooks, please uh, unmask and look at the witness. Sir, would you please oh. unmask and look I at am. the witness? I thank you. I'm writing some down. All right, thank you. Just want to make sure you Just hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> hurry up and do it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so serious. All right, thank you. Just want to make sure you heard me. Yeah. Hold on. I'm just trying to get a thumbnail. I'm sorry. I'm pausing so much. Uh, let me get it. All right. Is that the gentleman you encountered on the street that you're describing for us, ma'am? Yes, it is. Did Mr. Brooks speak to you in any way? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name. Um, you may answer. Yes, he did. What did he say? Objection leading. Overruled. Um, he asked if um, either of us had a phone that he could use. Yeah. And and we said, we, we hesitated because it was, it was strange. It was a strange encounter. And um, after what we had just witnessed at the parade, where I think we were both pretty much on edge at that point. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. When you're referring to we, who are you referring to? Sorry, my husband and I. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So he asked for the phone. Correct. You kind of pause. Yep. And then what'd you do? And then overrule. Go ahead. You may answer. His next words were, "I'm not going to hurt you. I just need to use your phone." And that's okay. when I gave him my phone. Okay. Did um, did he use your phone? Did you see him manipulate your phone in some fashion? Objection. What do you mean by manipulate? Um. Overruled, she may answer. How are you going to ask her a question during What was the question? Yeah. Did you see him use your phone in some way? Yes, I did. What did you see him do? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Um, he called his mom. Could you hear what he was saying on his end? Yes, I could Objection hear what he was leading. saying. Could you hear the uh, responses being provided by the person on the other end of the phone? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled, you may answer. No, I could not hear the other side of the conversation. Okay. Tell us to the best of your memory what you remember Mr. Brooks was saying into the phone. He's going to get aggressive now with the cross-exam when it comes to the, um, well, maybe not aggressive, but so I don't know if he's going to get at like the point where she first called the SUV a car. So that's one thing. But now she said that he talked to his mom. So he's going to try to say, well, how do you know for sure the, you know, the man you encountered? Because it's not him, right? But, yeah, he's going to try to ask, how do you know that was his mom if you couldn't see who it is or hear, like, all these stupid little, <laughs> these childish games. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. I'll Go ahead and please answer, please. not to be called that name. Thank you. He just kept asking his mom Keep to call calling him over. Bit, please. And I, he wasn't responding to anything that she was asking. He just kept repeating, call me an Uber. I need an Uber now. Did he sound urgent in his voice? Objection leading. Sustained us to the form of the question. How did his voice sound? There was a sense of urgency that he needed an Uber and he needed it now. And he was um, specifically referring to the person he was speaking to by what name? Mom. Objection leading. Overruled. Um, Should we answer? Her answer will stand. At some point, uh, did Mr. Brooks turn his attention to you and ask a question to you as he was still on the phone? Objection. I don't consent to being caught in that. Um, go ahead and answer. He asked for the address where, he, where we were located at the time. What did you tell him? I did not know the address, so I asked my husband what the address was and he provided the answer. Okay. And again, you're very close to your husband's workplace. Uh, we were actually in the parking lot at that time. Okay. 
I'm going to uh, Well, let me ask you this. At, at some point, did he pull up an exhibit terminate here. his phone call? Objection, Lee. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, he did. And what happened then? Um, he said that he was freezing, and he asked if I knew of any place that he could go warm up. So my husband directed him towards the lobby of Aries. Okay. Um, did he return your phone? His, I'm sorry. Did he return your phone to you? Yes, he did. Okay. And uh, did you see if he left your presence, where did he go? Objection. Lee. Overruled. He went up to the lobby. You saw that? Yes. Okay. Where did you go? We, we were pretty on edge at that point, so we put our kids in the car as quickly as possible and drove down the road. Okay. I'm going to show you... Um, some uh, exhibits on the screen in front of you, okay? Um, first is 171, I'm sorry. 171. Do you oh, see a photograph on the screen earlier. in front of you, ma'am? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you recognize anybody or any place in that photograph? Objection leading. Overruled. I recognize the Aries building in the background and Daryl Brooks on the porch. Okay. Uh, 171's previously been admitted, Your Honor. I'm going to uh, request permission to publish again. Permission granted. Objection. Objection. All right. It's noted it's overruled. It's already been received. Ms. Cordes, that's a touch screen in front of you. Could you just please uh, point out uh, Aries Industries? <laughs> And specifically, if you can, the area where you saw Mr. Uh, Brooks Objection. head to the lobby of the building. Objection. I don't consent to be involved in that again. Um, jury will disregard that last comment by the defendant. So Nobody's even pointing him out right now and saying you are Daryl Brooks. They're just saying the name. So every time he does that, it's like, in a way, he is, he is identifying himself as Daryl Brooks. Because nobody's calling him that in that moment. They're just saying the person in this image here is Daryl Brooks. So he's basically confirming, yeah, this is me right here. And you got the right guy. Do you want me to circle? Yeah, circle or X or dot, it's, whatever. It's way in the other corner over here, so it's okay. hidden by the trees. Okay. So the area where you first encountered Mr. Brooks, is that actually shown in this photograph? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Jerry will disregard that comment. I don't consent. Uh, go ahead and answer, ma'am. It's more over here where we were parked. There's a second parking lot okay. over there. Okay. And then uh, the person in the photograph, can you circle the person, please? Is that what Mr. Brooks looks like? looked like that evening when you spoke to him? Objection. I don't consent to being caught that name. Go ahead and answer. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to put up Exhibit 1. I'm sorry. Exhibit 76, and we're going to play it for you first uh, before it gets shown to the jury, okay? So at, uh, let me know when it's up, please. Um, it's on okay, thank you. For the record, this is a clip that's 53 seconds long. I'm just going to play maybe the first uh, 10 seconds or so and see if she recognizes I didn't catch what number that exhibit was. All right, we've uh, played about the first 10 seconds of that clip. Do you recognize the uh, what is shown in this video, ma'am? Yes, I do. What do you recognize it to be? It's the lobby of Aries Industries. Okay. And uh, is this the door that you directed Mr. Brooks to? Objection. I don't consent to being caught that name. You may answer, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Do you believe this uh, video is a true and accurate depiction of the events of November 21 of 21? Yes, I do. Uh, move to your 76 and permission to publish, Your Honor. I believe there was an objection. It's noted. It's overruled. Uh, exhibit 76 is received and permission to publish is granted. The witness wasn't there at the, in this video. How could it be relevant? Uh, your objections? Please keep talking so. over him. 
I love when they just talk you over him and they don't even care. Entirety, Your Honor. As soon as the jury's got it, they got it. Okay. Attorney thank you. Sue Opera does cool. not care one bit about any of his pointless objections. Like I like that she just talks right over it. So this is a new exhibit, 76. Okay, we can pause it <laughs> I couldn't at get the in. 30, 39 <laughs> second or 40 second mark. I said we'll play the whole thing, but uh, did you see a person approach the doors to the building during the video? Yes, I did. I saw Daryl Brooks approach the door. And is that consistent with what you saw that night uh, as you watched Mr. Brooks? Yes. Objection. I don't consent to being called their name. And now that you look at the, the door, do you see the address for the building on the door? Yes, I do. And what is the address, please? Uh, 550. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I don't have any other questions. All right. Uh, Mr. Brooks may have questions for you. Any cross, sir? I don't consent to being called that name for the record. <clears throat> Your cross, please. Can I get to it? Sometime today. You just stated that before the interaction with the person that you had, you didn't know him. That'd be fair to say? Yes, that's fair to say. So how could you refer to him by name if you didn't know him? I have seen the news since then and your the video of you being arrested and you had since been identified on TV. So that's how you came to the, the name? That's correct. So it'd be fair to say that you got that off of news reports? That's correct. So what does that prove? I wish there was like a point where he even has to explain why it is that he asked what he asked. Because what does that even mean? Yeah, okay, they got your name off the news. So, so what is that supposed to mean? It's not you? So who are you then? <laughs> are you taking the rap for Daryl Brooks? Like, th none of this makes any sense. You said the individual you spoke with seemed out of place and disoriented like he didn't know where he was. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. And with, and how would you characterize disoriented? You just seemed very, very nervous and that you didn't know where you were. Who's you? You had specifically said, I don't know where I am. Who's you? Or where am I specifically? So disoriented would, would, from your perspective, be exactly what? Disoriented as you did not know where you were. We need a 90611 for these pauses. I'm so serious. The most incompetent fake and attorney made reference to, to ever sit down uh, your phone being used at right? a defendant's table. That's correct. Defense table. And you also made reference to not being able to hear the uh, the person on the other line. That's correct. But you also made reference to not I knew it person who used your phone not being able or not answer, answering 
what was being asked to them. That'd be fair to say. Objection. That's a compound Parents. question, vague and unclear. Sustained to the form of the question. If you couldn't hear what was being said on the other end of the line, how can you how can you say that there was questions being asked? Well, there was clearly a conversation going on, and you just kept repeating, just call me an Uber, that you were very frustrated, and whoever was asking questions of you didn't just to call you an Uber. It's just my interpretation of it. I could not hear the other end of the phone conversation. So it would be fair to say you don't know what was being discussed? Besides call me an Uber, yes, that's correct. Do you recall the description you gave in your written statement? Uh, yes, I believe so. You believe so? Yes, I recall the description I gave. And what was that? The description I gave was an African-American male, about 160 pounds, 5'8", wearing a red t-shirt, no shoes. Here comes Daryl. Do I look like I'm that? And what's stupid about that as well is that if there are a couple details that they left off, he'll try to act as if that in and of itself is like room for him to try to make like a big deal out of it like oh you also mentioned this part is there any reason you didn't say that today well it's been over a year what do you what do you think like people aren't computers they don't keep a mental database of every word they've said throughout their life they have a general idea of it but he understands this he's just trying to be annoying as as usual And you referred to this individual coming from between houses, you said? That's correct. Is that what you actually saw? Yes, that's what I saw. I saw you approach us at the very start of the block from between two houses. Who Any is you? Why that's not in your written statement? I don't recall. I didn't actually write it. There was an, a detective at our house that was writing the statement for it. M maybe that part got missed. I'm not sure. Was it this statement? I don't have it in front of me to see it. Uh, permission to show the witness the written statement? Well, I don't know that it's necessary, Your Honor. It ha she hasn't expressed any inability to recall. Sustained. Uh, she did. She just said she don't know why that something was not in her written statement. That's... <laughs> she did not say that. What she said is she doesn't she know why the detective didn't write it in there. The detective is the one who wrote it, Your Honor. So, sustained. So, were you... Next, sustained so is were in the you, form of... Mr. Brooks, let me answer. Sustained is to the form of a question. So, the officer oh, wow. he was didn't writing what you that told him, or time. did you actually write it yourself? I did not actually write it myself. The detective was writing it as we were speaking, my husband and I. Do you recall that officer's name? No, I do not. <clears throat> you made reference, when you were at the parade, you made reference to
seen a car swerve or you said the car was swerving toward you? It looked like a car that was out of control. I didn't know which direction it was headed. <coughs> and I you think said it, you saw it. Drove toward the barricade? Correct, I saw it drive through the barricade. When you say through the barricade, uh, describe that. The car sped up and drove straight through the barricade and continued on West Avenue. Do you recall if this barricade was standing up or? I do down? not. I do not recall that. I was <coughs> in the middle of the road to prevent traffic from coming through, so I don't know if it was. I would assume it was standing up. And it, it, was it at that same moment that um, you saw officer fire shots? That's correct. Do you recall how many shots? Three shots. Did you see if the shots hit the vehicle, the cars yeah. you say? No, I did not. I was running up towards the house at the time with my son in my arms and I was just trying to keep an eye on the vehicle so I did not see where the shots actually went. Did you see a vehicle hit anyone? No, I did not. I really thought he was going to get into like questions about is it was it maybe an SUV or was it a actual car? Because what's weird is like sometimes he'll he'll actually steer the questions towards himself to like incriminate himself more, and it's just really weird. Like he'll help them clear up what it is that they're saying instead of just taking the answer sometimes, and like he'll actually make it to where it's like oh so you actually just definitively proved that that was you in that moment. But, yeah, I thought he was going to ask her, like, was it an SUV or was it a car? And then she's going to say, oh, it was an SUV. Which would could then further prove the it. When you saw it? No, I could not. Someone in the comments said the prosecution was really bored during these cross exams. They, they probably are, in all honesty. Especially with these like long the pauses. Went down West Street. West Avenue, correct. Did you see where it went from there, or did it just go straight down West Avenue? Uh, it it continued on West Avenue. I I was at one point um, the house was blocking the road, so I could I couldn't see where the vehicle continued on. Her testimony is very airtight. No real, like, room for Daryl to even ask anything whatsoever. Anything else stick out to you about that day? I I, I don't I don't know. Just, I mean, besides besides seeing the vehicle. What is this question? And and the police firing shots and then running into you afterwards. I mean, that was strange enough. Do you recall uh, what day you gave the? Um, statement 
Was that Not exactly. the same night or was it a few days after or a week or? It might have been up to a week later. I don't know the exact date. Recall why it took so long? I I don't know. I received a phone call from a detective probably <sighs> almost a week later and I would assume that they had a lot of other other people to attend to, other witnesses to get to. It was not a priority at the time. I was not. So it would be fair to say by that time you had saw news reports and had learned information about what happened. Correct. Before today, had you seen any of the uh, video footage or, or uh, photos that, that you saw today? Had, had you seen any of those before today? Are you talking about the video of you being arrested or I guess I don't understand the question. Uh, the videos that, the video footage that you saw today, had you seen that before today? I did see the Aries Industries clip before, yes. What about the other, uh, the other exhibit that was shown? I recognized that from a ring video I had, I had seen from the arrest. I like how he's not even arguing anymore about like how he doesn't consent to the name. Or he doesn't consent to being labeled as you, as he says. So it would be fair to say a lot of what you learned came from news reports. After the incident, yes. Dude, in this cross exam. Did you make any claim in this matter? Filed a claim? What kind of a claim? Have you filed any claim? No. You filed a complaint? I not no, I I just um gave a witness statement to the detectives. I did not file a complaint specifically. About what time did you learn that you could possibly testify in this matter? Objection relevance. Well, Overruled, you may answer. Um when I received a subpoena in the mail from the DA's office. Do you recall whose name was on that subpoena? Uh, Sue Opper. Do you see Sue Opper in court today? Yes, I do. Can you point her out for the jury and for the record? I'll stipulate, Your Honor. Thank you. The record will reflect the stipulation and the witness. There you go. Identifying Attorney do, Opper. Do you, call, do you recall around uh, what time you received that uh, <coughs> subpoena? I don't recall exactly, no. After you received the subpoena, did you, subpoena, did you follow up with the district attorney's office at that point? 
Uh, they contacted me. Attorney Opperty? Some someone it was a someone from the witness. I don't know what her exact title is. So it's someone from the DA's office. It's not specifically Sue Opper. Like a witness advocate type of. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Was it like a witness advocate? I don't know what her exact title is. Do you recall her, the, her name? Yeah, her, her, yes, her name is Carrie. She's good at remembering names After too. After you learned of the additional information, been able did you to remember uh, that? read any police reports or a complaint? No. Confusion on every witness's face when he asks that beyond pointless question. Like you see it every single time. I think I acknowledged that before too. You just see the confusion stretch across their face like what? Are you aware of who the plaintiff may be in this matter? It's just so irrelevant. It's the same. Ever been notified who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained, Your Honor. Next question, please. Do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Yes, there is. And who's the plaintiff? I believe it's the state of Wisconsin. Would that constitute a, a, a breathing human being or an entity? Objection, Grounds. argumentative, irrelevant, Grounds. sustained. Are you aware that only a human being can bring a complaint or be a plaintiff? Objection, misstatement Grounds. of the law, sustained. What could he possibly be writing down? He asked the same sovereign citizen question, so I'm not sure what he's like marking off the paper or what he's writing down. You ever down. had any interaction with the state of Wisconsin? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant, sustained. Grounds for Surrender 906.11, please. Move on. It's the same questions from the previous cross exam, so I don't, like what does he have to write? Have you ever contacted the state of Wisconsin in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain. Under 906.11, move on or I'll declare the cross-examination ended. Of course you would. Okay, are you done? Is it over? No further questions. Can you redirect? Great. Nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. This will also be a very good opportunity to take a mid-morning break. I'll rise for the jury, please. For the parties, uh, please be back in 10 minutes. We are in recess. That's great. Oh, my goodness. What a clown. <laughs> Yeah, I want to apologize again to everybody because I I don't know like uh if it's coming off on camera. 
I was super agitated to even see his face like during this one. So it's like every time he's interrupting, like I'm extra upset to even hear him like talk over people or to think we care at this point. Like it's so weird to see a grown man act like this. I, I've said it numerous times. It's it's weird to see an adult period act, <clears throat> excuse me, carry themselves in this manner. And it's like it's gone on for so long. It's like, how do you not? How do you not get tired of this? You know, like Daryl, how does he not get tired of hearing himself behave this way and like people viewing him in this manner? It's like, OK. You know, some people, they have like a moment where they're, you know, they're upset about something. I mean, not in this situation where it's like you clearly did something horrible to an entire community because then it's like, why are you acting as if we're inconveniencing you? But I understand there are moments with people just in life, you know, where they they're upset. And then sometimes it spills over into like a when you talk to them, they may lash out ever so slightly. But it's like he's maintained this for eight days straight. And I, it's unbelievable. It's to the point now where it's like every time I hear, <laughs> and I'm sorry if anybody's named Daryl is watching this. Every time I hear the name Daryl, I'm like, oh my God, dude. That reminds me of that guy. So yeah, I'm apologizing now if that comes off on camera. Um, and also for the like, the very slow pace of some of the cross exams lately. But let's go ahead and fast forward because they're taking a little 10 minute break. So I'll be right back. 